Hello and welcome back. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you the simple technique of, uh, of cutting a person out in Photoshop. Uh, it's pretty basic, but I'm going to spruce it up for you people that, are, uh, that already know how to do this and know how to do it well. Um, knowing how to do it well is the key. Um, and I'm going to show you how to cut out a person's hair and to keep all these little uh, air, uh, hairs that kind of flop, you know, fly out to the side. Uh, not a lot of people know how to do that, and it's kind of an impressive, impressive thing to do if you can. And also, if, uh, if you don't know how to cut a person out right, this is a great uh, you know, refresher course. Um, knowing how to cut out a person right and how to cut them out fast is something that employers really like to see. Um, it's one of the most important things a designer knows how to do, I think, uh, because every single one of them will do it at some point. Um, okay, uh, first thing that I want to do is I'm going to unlock the background layer by double-clicking on it and pressing OK when that layer, or uh, when that warning box comes up. I'm going to copy this layer. You can either just drag that layer down into your new layers button, like I just did, or you can press Control J on your keyboard and that'll do the same thing. I'm going to rename this layer because I like my layers named. I'm going to name it Cutout. And what I'll do is I'll select my polygonal lasso tool. If that's not the one that's showing, you just click and hold down until you get all of your selections up and you select your polygonal lasso tool. I'm going to make a real basic selection around the person. And I don't want to cut out any of those hairs that I'm going to come back to later, like I promised. Okay. So I've made a real basic selection, and I just do that to kind of get most of the background out of the way. Uh, now what we'll do is we'll press Q on the keyboard, and that'll take us into our quick mask mode. You can also toggle on and off the quick mask mode with this button on your tool palette. So I'm in quick mask mode. I'm going to zoom way in on the area that I'm working with. And as you can see, the area that you selected is clear still, but the area you didn't select is red. Uh, we want our person selected. And as you can see, we have more than just our person selected. So what we want to do is we want to brush in this area so that we just have our person selected. So I'm going to select my brush. I'm going to make sure that it's set to about 88 hardness, or, well, I say about 88 hardness. Uh, it should be from somewhere between 80 and 95% uh, and probably. I'm going closer to 90. Um, my brush size is about this big. It's 25 pixels. You can set yours to whatever you feel most comfortable with. I'm going to use my bracket tools on my keyboard to shrink my brush so I can get down into this area. The left bracket tool is what made it small. The right one makes it bigger. Okay, so I got into that area. As you can see, I got a little too much, so I press E on my keyboard to get my eraser. It's set to about the same hardness and the same size. And I'm just going to erase away some of that area that I didn't mean to get. Okay, so now I press B on my keyboard to go back to my brush, or you can select your brush there, and I'm just going to continue to brush in this area. One little trick that's nice to know is if you click one spot, hold down the shift key, and then click in a different spot, it'll connect those two spots with your, uh, with your selection. That works with both, both the eraser and the brush tool. So I'm going to go ahead and just kind of use that technique and cut out the rest of this person. And that is very helpful with speed, and also the hot keys are very helpful with speed. Learn your hot keys on your keyboard. And you know, um, watching tutorials like mine, I always like to, uh, and you know, a lot of other tutorial people do it too, but I always like to illustrate what hotkeys I'm using while I'm I'm doing um, my tutorials and it's a great way to learn is just by from other people or you can look them up online they're everywhere okay uh, so I'm using my bracket keys to shrink down my brush again use my right bracket key to make it bigger and I'm just kinda going really quick here if I were doing this for a client, I'd go in and go just a little slower, and I'd probably zoom in a little bit more, too, on some of those uh, crevices and that sort of thing. 
but since I'm making a video, and it doesn't need to be extremely accurate, I don't want my video to be a million minutes long, so I'm going to just do a real basic one. Okay, so I've, I've brushed out the areas that, uh, that I don't want selected. And I'll press Q on my keyboard to go out of quick mask mode, or you can press that button, like I said before. And you can see that you have just the person selected, and no more do you have that little gap on, and that's showing the background. Uh, what you'll want to do now is press your layer mask button on um, your layers palette down here. So we'll add a layer mask to that layer. And as you can see, nothing happened. But yes, it did. Uh, what I didn't do yet is I need to make this layer invisible. That's just a copy, just so that we have one. As you can see, when you make that invisible, you can see what you've cut out. And this actually doesn't look horrible. Um, I would go back in if I were doing this for a client and touch up areas like this. Uh, but I'm not going to for this video, because you don't need to see that. Uh, well, actually I will, because it's kind of important. So you click on your layer mask, and you'll select on your eraser, and, or your brush, because you can brush back in areas too. And you can kind of just, within the same layer mask, either delete areas like that, or, like I said, with a brush, you can brush them back in. And now that area is looking a lot better. Okay. I said I wasn't going to do that, but I did. Okay, anyway. Now I'm going to work on the hair like I promised. Uh, I'm going to select the layer, not the layer mask. Uh, I'm going to make a copy, actually, of this layer. So I'm going to drag that down into my new layers, and I'm going to name it hair. Okay. Since I'm only going to be working with the hair, uh, I'm going to make that cutout layer invisible. And since, like I said, I'm only going to be working with the hair, I'm going to get rid of everything other than the hair. So I'm going to take my polygonal lasso tool and make a selection of things that I don't really need. And it can be a real loose, oh, excuse me, a real loose selection like it was before. Okay. Something kind of like this ought to do. And just press uh, delete and it, just to get rid of it. Okay. Uh, now I'm going to make a, a real quick selection of the hair. And what I'll do is I'll use my quick selection tool. Uh, if your magic wand tool is showing, you click down and hold until your, uh, your selections come up. And I'm going to choose quick selection myself. And I'm going to make a real quick selection of my hair, like I said. And if you get too much, you press Alt on your keyboard and you can just brush out the areas that you don't need. So I have a real basic selection here as you can see. I'll zoom in a little bit. That's too much. Okay, so you can see I have a real basic selection. Um, I have my my layer part actually selected. I'll go up to select down to refine edge and you can see we have just the hair here. Um, I want my view mode set to on black. I think that's the best setting. You can do either on black or black on white. I uh, recommend staying away from the other ones. I think these ones are the best ones to kind of see what you're working with, especially with this technique. Um, I want you to click on Smart Radius and take that up to 250. Click on Decontaminate Colors, take that up to 100%, and then kind of see what you have. Um, as you can see, I have a lot of extra. Uh, not as much extra over on the left, which is... Uh, kind of nice, um, but I am going to mess around with the settings just a little bit. I mean, my colors are a little muddled here, so I'm going to take down my decontaminate colors, or I might even turn it off with this image. Some images it works a little bit better on than others. Um, I took mine down to 20%. I think that's looking pretty good, but as you can see, it brought back some of this area that we don't want, so I'll also take down my Actually, I'm going to leave my smart radius. I'm going to just take my shift edge and go a little negative on it, about negative 20, and we'll see what happens there. That's a little too much, I think, so I'll do about negative 15 or 16. Looks pretty good. I'm going to take my feather up to about 0.5. That looks pretty good. Okay, and now uh, this is one thing that you can do. Um, take this brush here in, in Photoshop in this setting uh, Photoshop allows you to kind of make selections of what you want to be, want to show and since we want these little stringy hairs I'm gonna try to brush some of them in 
in Photoshop can try to decontaminate the colors a little bit and brush in some of these areas that you select. And it kind of does it automatically, so it's kind of magical. Okay. 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 That's pretty good. Um, I think I'll take my smart radius down just a little bit, down to about 100, and see what that looks like. It's looking pretty good. I think I can work with that and kind of just show you guys what that's going to look like. Um, you can mess with these settings a little bit more, and you can do this step as many times as you need to to make it look good. Because, as you can see with my output, it's going to output it to a new layer with a layer mask, and that's what I want it selected here. Um, new layer with layer mask, and then I'll press OK. And that's why you can do this step as many times as you need to to make it look good, because you're actually making a new layer. Um, I'm going to save this hair layer. Um, you can, you're not going to use it, but that's, this is in case you want to do this uh, process again, because you would want to go back to that layer and start over. This is actually looking pretty good, I think. Um, so I'm going to keep this one. And in order to see what I'm working with, I'm going to create a new layer. I just clicked on my new layer button. And I'm going to put that down at the bottom. I'm going to make it white by uh, having my foreground color being white. Selecting my paint bucket tool and clicking uh, there. So you can kind of see what you're working with. And you can see that you have some extra stuff that you're going to need to brush out. Uh, another thing that you can kind of tell is that maybe you've lost a little color in the hair. And one thing that you can do to kind of get that, some of that back is to click on your image, not the mask, and click on your history brush tool. And... Okay, it's not going to want to let me do it from this layer because I cropped it originally. But I think it'll let me do it from one of these. Well, maybe it won't. Okay, uh, as you can see, it's not going to let me use the history brush um, because because I cropped my layer originally. If you if you don't crop your layer originally, if you're using an image that you just opened up, what you would do is you select, you put this icon next to your image, you select your um, <clears throat> your brush tool, and you can brush over your hair. And what it'll do is it'll correct some of those colors that you lost. But I made a mistake, and I didn't save out the image after I cropped it from the beginning and, uh, and reopen it. I actually did save it, but I didn't reopen it, so it, uh, it still thinks that I cropped it. Okay, uh, so we're going to have to skip that step now. <clears throat> but uh, it still looks pretty good, and you're actually going to have most of your hair behind here, so you can actually just erase some of this if you want and just, uh, just use the feathers. Okay, so what you'll do now, though, is you'll go in, and you'll take your eraser, and you'll set it to about 50%, and you'll set your brush to about 50 or less, probably, and you'll zoom in on these areas that you don't need, and you'll erase them uh, uh, off of your uh, mask. Always make sure that your mask is turned on, or you're selected when you're erasing. Okay. And, you know, I'm holding down the shift key like I showed you before. I'm just erasing a little bit of this. And you can see that this area looks pretty good, so I'm going to leave that alone. Just erase a little bit of things that we don't need. And if an area gets too muddled, you can use the old-fashioned technique of just kind of giving the girl a little haircut. But this makes it certainly a lot easier to go in and erase and keep these little feathered areas because it does most of this work for you. See, like this might be an area where I would give the girl a little bit of a haircut. Just a small one. Can't even tell. Okay. So, you, yep, just go in and erase all these areas until you're happy with your results.
And I can be pretty happy with that. If I was doing it for a client, that would take a little bit more time. I'd probably think about going back and redoing some of those uh, settings in my Refine Edge. I'm just trying to get it perfect. But I'll, I'll show you that this, this technique works really well. And I'll show you by uh, kind of just doing it here. Uh, like I said, since we're just using these feathery parts, uh, I'm going to go ahead and just delete some of these areas that we don't need. And we pretty much don't need any of the hair inside those feathers. So I'm going to go ahead and just delete those. In this way, your original hair will show through, and you'll have more of your original colors in that. Um, and those are a little bit better. At least for the main part of your hair. Okay, and like I said, now I'm going to go ahead and bring back my cutout layer. And as you can see, we still have all this area. So what we'll do is we'll click on the layer mask in my cutout layer, and go in, and finally just erase all of that area that we don't need. And it's looking pretty nice, isn't it? You have all these feathers, which I just made the, that, that up for, <laughs> for what these little hairs are called. I don't know why I'm calling them feathers, but it seems to be sort of suiting. Uh, as you can see, I'm brushing in some of the areas that, that I didn't like. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it right there. Um, yeah, it, you know, like I've been saying throughout the video, take a little bit more time with this and you can make it look really nice, but you can see the sort of effect that you can get. Um, I mean, this is on a white background. If you put this on uh, a different background, nobody would even, even with this image that I did really quickly, uh, you wouldn't be able to tell. You can certainly do this on a white background if you take just a little bit more time and go in, like right here, I might give her a little bit of a haircut and just leave these hairs out. But some of these little effects that you leave on the hairs are, are really nice and uh, can kind of impress people. So I'm going to leave you with that. I hope that you learned something from this tutorial. I hope I didn't go too fast. I hope I explained it well enough. If you liked this tutorial, please click the like button below. Please follow me on Facebook and Twitter. My Facebook, I just got changed to uh, facebook.com slash glazefoliodb, so it's a little bit easier to follow now. Uh, and please leave your comments below um, and tell your friends. Thank you very much.